This is a quick look at how you can launch your own instance of RStudio server in the Google Cloud platform with just a couple of lines of R code by following this post from Mark Edmondson. And it truly is that simple to, to start and stop your own instances. There is a little bit of initial setup that you need to do via um, Google Cloud platform. You just need to kind of enable a project and enable all the necessary APIs. But then once that's done, you'll be, you'll be ready to go and you can start and stop as you need. So I'm going to start a new um, a new project here in my R Studio session and uh, call it GCS demo, and we'll just store all of our code in here, and we're going to just follow step by step in the instructions given by Mark Edmondson. So he references early on. Um, that there is a bit of initial setup. You can click through on this article right here, but um, I'm going to kind of run through this uh, in a in a separate um, in a separate window. So basically, what we need to do to set up is first of all we need to go to our cloud console. So now I'm in my project. Um, I think it may be enabled by default, but if I go into API Manager and then click on the Enable API button, I'm just going to make sure that Google Compute Engine is is um, initiated. So if I type in engine here to search, you can see I've got Google Compute Engine API. I click on that and then it's already enabled here. If if it's not enabled for you, just click on enable right there and that will that will start it up for you. And then the last thing to do is to get your credentials. And so in the um in the article guide, which is definitely worth reading, um the uh, the step by step guide on what you need to do, and um, it tells you to get a service account key JSON file. That's the the recommended thing to do. And and who are we to go against the recommendations? So um, all we need to do there is click on create credentials in the credential screen, and then I'm going to go for a service account key. I want the JSON format. I'm going to choose the Compute Engine default service account and then I just click on create and that's going to generate a JSON file for me and this only gets generated once. Um, it says Google gives me a, a warning message right here so obviously you need to take care about what you do with that file. I'm going to I'm going to save it. And you can see it's in my downloads folder. I'm just going to drag that over into my um, into the project folder for for this particular um, our project and I'm going to rename that to something a bit easier to type. Um, there we go. So that's pretty much everything done that we need to do in um, in Google Cloud Platform in the in the console. I do just need to make a note of the the project name which I already know um, make a note of that project name here back in our R Studio file. Oops. Just as soon as I remember how to type. And that's just a setup value that we're going to use in a moment. Obviously we want to put a call to the to initiate the library at the top of this script, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. So that's our first piece of information that we're going to use in um, in authenticating to Compute Engine. The other thing is to select which zone we want our um, instance to be running in. I'm going to go ahead and choose um, Europe West 1B. If you run a Google search for Google Compute Engine zones, then of course you can find in the um, Google documentation, you can find all the information you need about what these zones are. It's obviously makes sense to um, to run an instance close to your own geographical location to have the, the best possible performance. And then the final piece of information that I need to note here in um, in setup is the path to the JSON key that we just generated from the um, from the cloud console. So um, I'm going to call this account underscore key. Whoops and you need to just give the path. So here this is in the the root folder of my um of my uh, of my R project as you can see if I just kind of quickly call this files there it is it's straight there. If you had it in a subfolder obviously you'd need to give the the subfolder name right here, but I don't need to do that. And then 
we just need to set some environmental variables um, in our session so we do that by calling sys.setenv and then we write in the following firstly gce auth underscore file equals and that's the name of our account key that we've just created gce underscore default project id is the name of our project and gce underscore default zone is the name of the zone that we just set so this is just some some default information that we're passing in for our session with all that done we should now be able to call the function gce auth which comes from the google compute engine r package and we should authenticate using that json file to um, google compute engine so there you go that looks successful to me so we've now um, authenticated successfully with um, with Compute Engine, which is great. Let's just set up a couple of um, defaults just to be absolutely sure. I think this might be slightly redundant, but I'm just going to um, show you how to do it, calling some functions. Firstly, um, set our default global project. We do that by calling um, GCE global project. And then we pass in the name of, of the project that we specified further up in the script. And we get a nice helpful confirmation here that that's gone ahead. And then we call GCE global zone and I'm going to call that zone and again there you go so we've set our project name to this slightly odd value here and uh, we've set our default zone to Europe West 1B and if you wanted to at this point you can check okay let's have a look at what our default project is so we'll call um, GCE get project and if we leave that field blank it's going to get the project information for the default project which we know should be this one that we just passed in but I'm just going to specify the name here just to be absolutely sure if I then call default project name you'll see we get the name confirmed back to us so Google Compute Engine API has confirmed for us that that's a default project that we've got set up so that's it for, for setup. As I say, that's all covered in this very helpful article here from, from Mark Edmondson, and it's worth having a look through that. Now, having done that, there are just these two simple lines of code that we need to um, to look after to deploy our instance. So um, we're going to create a new variable called VM, and we, put, we call the GCE VM function, and we need to specify the template, which is called RStudio. We need to give it a name, and I'm going to call it our Studio Demo. We need to specify our username, and I'm not going to show you what they are, but you can. Well, I'll show you. The username will be our Studio, and the password will be something which I won't show you. I'm sure you can pick something good here. And finally, this is important. We need to pick out the predefined type and the values we pass in here are n1 high mem dash 2 um, and that's the the name of the instance type that we're going to use for ideal performance for our um, for our virtual machine and of course if you want more information about all the arguments that you pass in to this function then you just look up the help file and you get very detailed help information here so with this block of code right here, I'm defining the virtual machine that we want to create. And Google Compute Engine R is going to go ahead and create that instance details for us. So the operation will take a little time to run. And while it's doing that, we're going to see if we can look up the details of this machine now on our, um, on our Compute Engine platform. So I'm going to type my RStudio and we're going to look up we're going to look up this instance name. There we go, and we get a helpful confirmation here that tells us that the VM is running. But also if I now type in my RStudio and we check the status. There you go, it tells me that it's running. So that should confirm for me that my instance of our Studio server is now all up and running, which is pretty cool. Um, in the console here, you see towards the end of the operation, we got given an IP address 
for our instance. So this is what we need to copy and paste into our web browser to make this run. Now, it might take a few minutes, as you can see, um, it may take a few minutes before everything gets up and running. But once that's done, once you've waited a little while, if you type in that IP address, you get this authentication screen. And then you sign in. And you have your own running instance of our Studio server, and that's it really. And then, of course, you can upload any packages that you want to, and you can run this in the cloud. Um, the only other thing worth knowing about really is how we can start and stop instances. So let's call this, if we call the GCE VM stop function and pass in the name, which we take from up here, which is our Studio demo, then we should stop our instance and we'll get a uh, notification. So if I call job and status again, it's currently pending. If we kind of keep spamming that, there you go, it's still pending. Eventually we'll get a notification that that operation is completed. And the way I can be sure what's happening with my instance, and in fact with all my instances, if I go to GCE list instances, then I'll get a list back of um, of all the instances within this project. And you can see that for our Studio demo, the current status is terminated. And if I um, and if I try refreshing the IP address that I was given, you can see it just kind of hangs here because it's no longer available as a resource. So if um, for some reason I'd stopped that instance incorrectly and I wanted to start it again, you can probably guess how you do that. Uh, GCE VM start, pass in the name of your instance again. And because um, Google Compute Engine knows our instances by name, we just pass that through, run the code, and it will run that again for us. And again, it might take a few minutes to start up, but once that has happened, if you just call GCE list instances, There you go, that's currently staging, so hopefully it'll be done in a second. There we are, so my instance is back up and running again. I have a new IP, so I'll need to note down that new IP address. And it's just restarted that instance based on the, um, the Docker template that we gave it. And then you can just authenticate and you're back up and running again. And once you're done with your instance, uh, unless you need to have it kind of persist and keep your configuration, I personally tend to just stop stop those um, instances once it's done because the Google billing is based on the number of computing, the amount of computing time that you use up. So it, it definitely makes sense to, to stop that when you're done with it. So hopefully that is everything that you need to understand how to get your own platform up and running in the cloud. It's extremely helpful, it's really useful if you want to have scripts running or data pools running um, while you're not sat on your machine and not tying up your own machine. Uh, enormous thanks to, to Mark Edmondson for all the, all the packages that he creates and all the, all the work that he puts into um, creating these very, very useful tools.